Before I begin, just a special welcome to everybody here, uh, our guest judges, all the comm instructors, uh, mechanical, civil, electrical, ABET, can't forget them this time, and of course my family sitting there right in the middle. I'm Curtis Lyons, and uh, I'm second year mechanical engineering uh, in the design option, and uh, ever since I was about this tall, I've been just a huge gearhead, just love anything with a motor and a steering wheel, preferably a V8, but... <laughs> Um, and when I was in high school, I used to work on diesel engines, and, uh, and then I decided to become an automotive mechanic, actually, after that, and I did my first year here at BCIT. Unfortunately, after that fell through, I decided to do the, uh, the engineering route, and I've been enjoying it ever since. So today I'm going to be talking about diesel engine fuel injection and emissions control systems. It's a very hot topic nowadays because of climate change and that kind of thing. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm basically going to be talking about the basic types of fuel injection, the two main methods that have been used for over the past 50 or so years. And what way we're, what we're doing now to reduce the emissions coming out of the tailpipe. Uh, brief conclusion, and then I'll have time to answer any questions. Okay, why do we need emission control systems? Well, obviously climate change is a big deal nowadays. And Bill Hewitt, president and founder of Power Stroke Specialties, says it pretty blatantly. The EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, wants to you know, wrap your lips around the tailpipe and breathe in and not die. <laughs> so in the last 15 years, we've gone from cloudy, smoky, loud, inefficient trucks, like this one here, to clean burning, efficient, and just overall good running vehicles, like nothing like we had, just even 15, 10, 15 years ago. So, it all it comes down to the fuel delivery system mainly, and what we've been using since the dawn of time is called an injection pump, which pulls the fuel from the fuel tank, it delivers it to the injection pump via the lift pump. It runs at about 7 or so PSI. The injection pump pressurizes the fuel up to about 25 to 30,000 PSI and sprays it at the top of the cylinder, right at the top of the combustion stroke at the precise time because it is timed mechanically to the engine. Now, the advantage to this is this system is very simple. It's very reliable. It's been used since the dawn of time. However, it's, the disadvantage with it is that with fuel gelling and sub-zero temperatures, it doesn't like to start right away. Uh, produces a lot of black smoke, and the engine is quite noisy. It's just because you have no electronic metering whatsoever. It's purely mechanical. Now, what we use today, in about 2007 or so, model year and later, all trucks that are on the road now come with this style of fuel injection. It's called common rail. You have a small lift pump that feeds the fuel to the high pressure pump at about 7 or so PSI. The high pressure pump pressurizes it between 25 and 30,000 PSI and sends it to the fuel manifold. Now, you have an individual solenoid controlling the fuel flow through the injectors via the engine control module, so you can get very, very precise fuel metering. So the main advantage to this is you get very precise fuel metering with the electronic controls. Precisely metered fuel also allows for less particulate emissions, less noise, and also increased fuel efficiency. You get very little black smoke, like I said before, and very reliable cold starting. And this works by what's called pilot injection. So the fuel injector pulses a few times before and after the main delivery of fuel in order to cushion the shock of the fuel burning. The only problem is this system is very costly to repair if you were to have a problem with it. Now we're controlling two main pollutants that are coming out of the tailpipe in modern diesel engines. First one is oxides of nitrogen, also known as NOx. It combines with the hydrogen in water molecules to form acid rain. It's also created by heat and compression during the combustion cycle. The more efficient your combustion, the more NOx emissions you have. And diesel engines are very efficient at combustion. And particulate matter, which everybody knows, is black smoke. It has about the same effects as smoking, where it increases your heart rate and your blood pressure. And it's a result of an excessively rich fuel mixture due to a high loading condition, such as towing a huge trailer up a hill or trying to outrun your neighbor's Corvette. <laughs> Never a good idea. Okay, the exhaust gas circulation system is how we control NOx emissions. It basically takes 
exhaust gas from out of the turbocharger, runs it through a cooler, and then meters it back into the engine through a valve. And well, how this works is this exhaust gas that's sent back into the engine occupies a volume of usable air, basically reducing combustion efficiency, which subsequently reduces the NOx emissions. So the advantage, it reduces the NOx emissions, however only slightly. And because you're reducing the combustion efficiency, this robs engine power. You're introducing 1,250 degree Fahrenheit exhaust gas heat back into your cooling system, which is overtaxing the cooling system. And if the EGR cooler fails, you're going to overheat the engine pretty badly, which is a very common problem in the international Navistar engines that were used by Ford Motor Company from 2003 to 2007. Most engine manufacturers implement this system since about 2003. Now, selective catalytic reduction is a fairly new technology based, it was originally based in power plants from years ago and has now been brought to the uh, automotive world. So basically you have a reaction where oxides of nitrogen react with ammonia, carbon monoxide, and oxygen to become nitrogen gas, uh, basically gaseous water or water vapor, and carbon dioxide. By running diesel exhaust fluid, which is 32.5% urea in deionized water, down and into the exhaust and mists it into the exhaust into the selective catalyst reduction catalyst, it is able to run this reaction here and treat the exhaust gas and reduce the NOx emissions. The advantage to this system is this reduces almost all of the NOx emissions, depending on the amount of fluid being used. It eliminates or reduces the need for the EGR system. The only thing is you have to fill it the tank periodically, which is typically every time that you fill your fuel tank. And, of course, that selective reduction catalyst is very, very expensive. And the engine computer will shut it down completely if you run out of diesel exhaust fluid. It's like running out of fuel, it won't run without it. So how we control the particulate emissions is by a diesel particulate filter, which is basically this big can in the exhaust here with a platinum screen that catches all the exhaust gas that goes through, all the soot that goes through it. Now, you have a differential pressure sensor that senses the difference between both sides in pressure. Now, obviously as the filter becomes clogged, the engine side is going to get higher pressure than the tailpipe side. So what it, the computer does, once it senses that the pressure is too high, the difference, it sprays fuel into the exhaust system through the diesel oxidation catalyst, which heats the exhaust system up to 14,000 degrees Fahrenheit, subsequently burning all the soot off into an ash, and then it blows it out the tailpipe out. This reaction I put down here up top is a basic combustion reaction that happens when, during the regeneration process. So the advantage to this system is you reduce pretty much all of your particulate matter coming out of the exhaust. You look at a tailpipe of a modern diesel engine and there is nothing in the tailpipe that is totally clean. The disadvantage is this requires the vehicle to be driven on the highway or at least at a high RPM in order to support the regeneration process. And this significantly reduces fuel economy because you're injecting a large amount of fuel into the exhaust stream during this process. And, of course, the diesel particulate filter and the diesel oxidation catalyst being made of platinum are very, very expensive to replace. So, in conclusion, our modern common rail fuel injection systems that are implemented today by the engine manufacturers are very smooth, quiet, and provide fuel efficient and reliable power. Selective catalytic reduction reduces almost all NOx emissions coming out of the tailpipe and with very few drawbacks. The selective catalytic reduction also eliminates the problem of the EGR system constantly gumming up the top end of the engine, which is another common problem that, is, that rears its ugly head from time to time. And the diesel particulate filters, they maintain zero particulate coming out of the tailpipe at all times. So, some of the references that I use to make this presentation possible. And of course, I'd be happy to answer any questions that anybody would like to ask.